I love the Unify line of products. I love that they brought software-defined networking to so many small and medium-sized businesses. But did they bring network programmability with them too? Let's find out. Since I found out about Unify several years ago when I was starting out as a consultant, it kind of changed my mind and really opened up my eyes to the power of software-defined networking in general. You know, for a long time, software-defined networking, having a central controller that you log into that implements policies and changes throughout your entire network with all your devices in one place, that really felt like a data center technology for a long time. It felt like the only people who were ever gonna be able to do that were people that were dealing with ACI, uh, but then they came out with, with APIC, and then they came out with the enterprise version of APIC, and they're like, hey, we can do Wi-Fi, we're, we're friendly to the enterprise too. And then uh, they came out with DNA Center for integrations across all your ACI environments, but all of that still felt very data center-y. And for medium and small businesses, organizations, you know, with only a handful of people and a handful of staff, maybe some remote workers, uh, the best tool that you could use at the time was Meraki. And if you're asking my opinion to this day, I'll still probably say that Meraki is one of the best networking solutions that there is hands down. Um, but even then, Meraki, especially when you get into the switches, they can still be somewhat pricey. So when Unify shows up and they say we've got kind of the same product, it does almost all the same things at a tiny fraction of the cost, well, let me just say that I'm a believer. So much so that my entire house is Unify stuff. I have my Unify controller running in Azure because if my house loses power or something, I can get notified with push notifications to my email that says, hey, your, your network just went down and it came from my controller that's running in Azure. It's great. But Meraki is this incredibly robust product that has this incredibly robust API that we can hit and perform all sorts of network programmability and automation functions with, with Python. In fact, it even has its own SDK, meaning it has its own languages and commands within the Python subset if you just install it. So does Unify bring anything like that to the table too, considering they're so incredibly affordable? Well, guess what? I got a script for you. All right, so you can see I've got VS Code fired up again, and this time we are working with a little Python script that I slapped together today. This code is available on GitHub. Feel free to grab it, follow along, work with your own Ubiquiti Unify controller if you want. Here's the guts of it. First off, we are going to be importing the request library because, well, that's how you work with HTTP requests. We are going to be transmitting JSON and expecting JSON responses back. I have also downloaded a little library called Pretty Print or PPrint. And then, of course, the URL lib3 is for this line right here. So that way, when it reaches my self-signed certificate, we can just tell it to suppress the warnings that this is an insecure connection. All right. First things first, we're going to set a variable for the gateway. And this says IP here. You can put a fully qualified domain name there. And just like most Ubiquiti Unify controllers, it listens on 8443. Now for the headers, we are specifying that we are sending a content type of JSON and we will accept a JSON response back. Now this part right here, we're gonna be tinkering with the URL. So the URL is gonna have a base URL of the gateway IP colon the gateway port. And then I'm gonna append this to the end of it, the slash API slash login with this login URL right here. Now this is gonna be changing throughout the script, so just keep that in mind. Now the body, the first thing that we have to do like with most software-defined networks and most controllers, we have to log in. And this is where the Unify controller deviates a little bit from things that you may have seen in Juniper and Cisco. So we're gonna specify in the body a username, and I'm gonna put my username here and then a password, and I'll put my password here, but the Unify controller does not send us back a token. We're not getting a JWT or any sort of token there. We are going to be getting a cookie back. In fact, let me show you real quick what that's going to look like. 
Well, not too surprisingly here, we've got Postman and Up, and I'm just going to do a little exploration here to show you what these cookies really look like. When I log in to my Unify controller, we'll just do this right here, we've got a RC OK response. Check it out. These are the cookies that are getting handed back to me. Now, Postman is awesome in the sense that it can handle these cookies automatically, but we're going to have to tell our Python script to handle these cookies, and the way we do that is in the requests library, we open a session. And then instead of using request.get or request.post, we actually use the session itself. So session.post, then we specify the URL, the headers, the data in this case is going to be the body, the username and the password, which we convert to JSON, and then verify false, telling it not to verify the certificate. Now, when this data comes back to me, this is going to be returning that RC OK response. I'm just going to be storing it in API data for now. And the reason I was storing it in API data was because right here with all these print statements, I've got all these print statements here where I was just printing out the response and making sure that I was able to log in. So I'll uncomment that real quick and we'll do a pretty print on API data so that way you can see that we were able to log in. Now coming down here, we're going to move on and get a list of all of the sites that are available on the Unify controller. If you have more than one site, because that is one of the beautiful parts of having a Unify controller in the cloud is that you can then have more than one site that reports into your Unify controller wherever they are around the world. This is really, really great for MSPs or managed service providers, basically IT providers that have a bunch of different clients. If they all have Unify infrastructures, they can all report back to your single cloud and you can administer their networks remotely from one single point of login. That's kind of the idea that I do here. I actually run a couple other networks in my Unify cloud. So in this case, we'll be getting a list of sites so that way we can get the specific site name and then dig closer into that. Let me show you what that really looks like here. So now we're going to be hitting the URL of gateway IP and then port, but now it's going to be slash API slash self slash sites. And that returns a list of the sites. We'll of course parse it in JSON. I could print out all of the sites right here if I wanted to, but really what we're doing here is I'm going to be going into the list of sites and I'm going to be trying to find the site that has a description called Knox Home. And for the site that has a description called Knox Home, get the name. You see, the name itself is actually a unique identifier that you wouldn't be able to find otherwise. In fact, it makes sense for me to uncomment this right here, this print in, because we're setting the response of that name to the variable in right here. So I'm going to print in out so that way you can see what the actual name of the site was when we find the site with a description knocks home. And then lastly, what I want to do with that site in place, I want to get a list of all of the devices in that site. So the URL here is API slash S, which is short for self. That'll both work. We're injecting the variable in here, then stats, then device. So we've got the gateway IP, the port, API, S, the name, stat, and device. That will take us all the way in and get a list of all of the devices back. Now, of course, we're going to be parsing it from JSON, and then we'll be pulling all the lists, the data out into a list. And then I'm actually going to iterate over each of these devices and print out information about that device. So it'll say the device with the device's name has an IP of this, the MAC address, does it have DHCP or static IP configured? Is the device online or offline? Or is it upgradable? Should we be upgrading the operating system? And then a little blank space here to keep it nice and pretty. All right, what do you say we give this a run? I'll just fire up a terminal real quick. We'll choose the folder that this is located in. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to bring the terminal all the way up. We will execute this script with ubnt.py. Yeah. Syntax errors. All right, with those cleaned up, let's clear the screen and give those one more try. We'll drag the terminal back up. Just tap up. Oop. There we go. All right, look at that. Pretty quick response. Look at this. All right, so we got our response OK. We are logged in. This was the site name right there, OB4SV. Remember I told you it was a unique name 
that came back for the site that was named Knox Home. This was the device list and stats. So we've got a downstairs WAP, an upstairs WAP. There's the eight port switch. There is the Unify firewall. And then there's an eight port switch here in the studio. So that's it. That's the script of how we can go about automating networks with our Unify controller.